So last class we had started with uh, the goals of financial management if you uh, remember. So we uh, started with the second part of it, uh, what is wealth maximization, the favorable arguments of it and the unfavorable arguments of it. And then later we moved on to who is a financial manager and what is the functions of the financial management. We looked at different uh, points, various points over here in total 10. So this is a uh, section C question. So I hope you have understood to it and I'll be passing out the notes to you shortly. So today we'll be studying what is a financial plan. Let's look at the meaning of the plan or financial plan. It is a statement estimating the amount of capital and deta determining its composition. Now there are two things here in the meaning, you are estimating and determining the composition, right? There are two parts to it. Now estimating is how much amount do you require, right? Is it 10 lakhs or is it 50 lakhs or is it 100 crores, right? Now what is the amount of capital that you require? You're going to estimate. Once you're estimating 50 lakhs is what I need or 10 lakhs is what I require. The second part is what? Determining its composition. So this 10 lakh rupees, from where am I going to raise that capital? Either it's going to be, I'm going to take a 10 lakh rupees loan from a bank, or I'm going to have debentures, or 50% debentures and 50% of equity shareholders. Okay, so depending on my credit worthiness or my financial uh, resources, companies, when I say mine, I, I'm meaning or I'm uh, pointing out it's a company's capability okay so I'll first decide how much I need and then from where do I raise that amount of capital let's look at the various five steps in financial planning the first one you analyze the financial environment or the business environment around you right in terms of finance in terms of non finance as well right how is the industry performing what is the booming industry? Which product line is most profit making right now or current scenario? Okay. What is the government policies, etc.? What is the, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, businesses that are failing, kind of businesses that are booming? What is the updated technology businesses are using? Okay. Now I'm going to analyze a thorough uh, business environment around me, not just the industry that I'm working in or I'm a part of. If I'm into software, I might check Infosys, Webpro, Accenture, etc. I will look into software participants. If I'm into, uh, uh, you know, manufacture of smartphones or mobile phones. If I'm, you know, producing Oppo, okay, my company is Oppo. I'll be looking at what Vivo is doing, right? The company Vivo. What is company Samsung doing? What is company OnePlus doing? So I'm going to analyze the business environment, the pros and the cons. I need to be aware of both the positive side of my business environment and the negative side of it. The second step to financial plan is I need to develop financial goal, which is very, very prominent in this perspective because I need to analyze if I'm taking 5 lakh rupees of debenture and I'm promising them 10% rate of interest that I will pay them periodically, I need to understand whether my company or am I capable enough to repay them back. Now you very well remember what are the rights of debenture holders? Do they have the right to join the meeting in the uh, annual general meeting? No. Do they have the right to make any choices or decisions? No. But what is the ultimate right? It is the right on the assets of company. If I as a company fail to make their interest payment, debenture holders have a right on the assets of the company they can sell the company assets recover their amount of money is that clear so do uh, does any company want that to happen definitely no so i need to first develop the right financial goals this is my profit margin this is my investment or this is my expenditure or cost so i need to budget things before i actually make a plan so i need to know what my goal is is my goal you know, matching my credit worthiness of my company. Number three or step three, framing financial policies and procedures. Okay. If I'm, let's say I'm decided 5 lakh rupees of debenture, 5 lakh rupees of equity. 5 lakh rupees of equity, I'm going to analyze. I'm going to follow the instructions laid down by SEBI. 
yes or no who is the owner or who is the watchdog of the entire stock exchange it is sebi securities exchange board of india there i need to follow up all the procedures or the registration policies the prospectus the advertisement etc all these policies and procedures i need to be aware of and i need to also frame them according to my company is that clear there is a certain rules for those company who are a small scale company for those who are manufacturing for those who are into service so accordingly i need to frame what is required or what is necessary from the eyes of law for my company number 4 ensuring adaptability and flexibility my financial plan must not be rigid or must not be you know fixed to a certain uh, circumstance every day do we change yes or no we change as human beings economies change countries change governments change and its policies and procedures or regulations change time in and time out therefore i also need to ensure i am able to adapt myself to the changing circumstances around me not necessarily business perspective it can be from the government perspective it can be for the self uh, growth or expansion perspective the second word here is flexibility now flexible and rigid are two opposite words yes or no rigid means i am not going to change no matter what the circumstances opposite what is flexibility i make the necessary changes in my financial plan according to the requirements or according to the changing circumstances is that clear so ensuring adaptability i adapt to the changing circumstances and i also edit or i would say in a simpler words change my financial plan only when it is required not every now and then but only when it is required number 5 review of financial plan now review of financial plan is simply taking a feedback of how my plan has helped me reach my objective i repeat review of financial plan is what taking a feedback a just a cross check of how my financial plan is helping me lead the objectives of my company that is what profit maximization and wealth maximization so as in now time in and time out i need to review whether my plan is a good plan now let's say those plans when i reviewed my latest plans it is not helping me reach my financial objectives or my company objectives what do i do so do i still continue the same objectives or the same financial plan definitely no i need to go back and change it okay i need to make the necessary changes so as to it will help me reach my financial goals is that clear so these are the five steps in financial planning the first one is analyzing the business environment second developing financial goals number 3 framing financial policies and procedures four ensuring adaptability and flexibility and number 5 review of financial plan hope you have understood this topic the next topic today we are going to study is principles of sound financial planning so you have eight different points over here starting with simplicity now let's look at the heading there principles means what the right things or the perfect things of what sound financial planning if my financial plan has to be a good one or an efficient one what are the things i need to consider number one i need to consider is it has to be simple right if i'm going to make a plan and it's too much uh, you know complicated and only i can understand because i made that plan i will understand it but the same thing if i'm going to uh, show it to you and ask you what have you understood of it you will just say i'm confused right if it is so complicating and so confusing you will definitely not understand it so the first aim of financial plan or the first principle of financial plan must it must be simple right if you look into the any uh, uh, financial documents or financial statements of any company let's say the balance sheet it starts with what on your left side there is liabilities okay so you start with share capital so you're going to start with equity share capital if they have and debentures if they have etc if i'm going to have too many things in that capital structure definitely government is going to intervene why do you have so many sources of capital where is the money coming from or what for what purpose are you using that money 
etc right so to avoid all this confusions let's make a financial plan simple okay easy to understand to any layman who looks into it second foresightedness as i told nobody is going to start the business for what one year today i'm going to start the business with the perspective of after one month i'm going to shut down this business does any businessman think this way no anybody who's starting the business will always look into the future i want to grow i want to expand my business i want to start more branches etc okay so your financial plan must not be for one financial year but for the upcoming financial years number 3 is flexibility i just discussed with you right flexible means making the changes only when necessary or only when required liquidity liquidity is the amount of liquid cash if you can see that picture over there right from the jar there is money flowing out in the form of water that means there is the liquid cash that is able to make your immediate payment requirements liquidity is the amount of money required to make sure your immediate payments are fulfilled or payments are completed if you have to pay wages to your laborers or you have to pay your electricity bills for your godown or for your uh, uh, you know company etc you have to make that payment immediately is that clear so liquidity is the amount of capital required to meet your day to day commitments or payment commitments number 5 economy remember whenever this economy comes into picture i'm talking about the cost of raising of capital okay cost of economy means cost of capital or cost of raising the capital now here i'm looking uh, uh, just now we discuss about the example of if i need 10 lakh rupees and 5 lakh i'm raising through debenture and 5 lakh i'm raising through equity now i have to look into it whether is it economical for my company if i am going to raise too much of debenture what did i tell you the right of debenture holders is in case i fail to make the payment they will come sell my assets and take that money away from me they don't even have to ask me right so that is the right of debenture holders because what when they gave me money and i promised them interest i am promising them basically irrespective of i earn profit or i earn loss i will pay you 10% interest so when i am saying that word i need to keep that up because debentures have the rights if you don't keep up that word or don't give me the promise returns i will come sell your assets and recover my money on the other side what if there's too much of equity if there's any decision to be made by two people as a uh, com, uh, combined two people two people are different two people's thought process are different to come into a common decision making both of them will have a clash of decision yes or no if to make a common decision if two people are struggling or if it's a challenging one to make a decision imagine all the 10 lakh rupees i'm raising through equity and there going to be so many equity shareholders and what is the one of the promising rights of equity shareholders is they can make decisions for the business yes or no they can make decisions for the business can all of them make decisions do you think all of those decisions are very sound decisions and that will help company grow definitely not so if you are having too much of equity your decision making of the company is going to be hampered or going to be affected on the other side if it is too much of debenture or uh, the composition of debenture is more than equity then there is a huge financial risk so for the economy purpose or to keep your cost of capital low have a equal or an optimum share capital or i would say capital structure of equity and debenture have both in the equal sense depending upon what your credit worthiness is as a company sixth one optimum use so let's say i have uh, taken 5 lakh from debenture and 5 lakh from equity i have raised it completed all the legal procedures are completed now 10 lakh rupees is in my hand now the, it is up to me as a company how am i going to make use of this money am i going to buy fixed assets or i'm going to um, keep a money aside for reserves keep money aside for uh, working capital keep money aside for my payments etc how am i going to use this money optimum meaning maximum usage 
okay so this 10 lakh rupees i must put into the maximum benefit put into various investment areas where i will reap maximum benefit so optimum use is making the maximum benefit or usage out of the available financial resources if i'm thinking tomorrow some emergency might come only 5 lakh i will invest other 5 lakh i will just keep it as an idle cash is that going to work definitely it's not a sound decision right i need to analyze and then make choices i just can't keep that 5 lakh for almost 1 to 2 years idly just in my account not making any kind of investment not bearing any kind of interest it is absolutely a foolish decision i have to make a wise choice put it into an investment resource and then make benefit out of it seven contingency as i told today uh, the whole pandemic that we are going through right it is a uncertainty or a contingency or a risk right now here company's policy was what to pay full salary whatever the promised salary when when i'm joining your company you promise me 10000 rupees of salary yes or no so that has to be made or that has to be paid according to my work now due to this pandemic and you can't afford my full salary that is 10000 what you did because of the contingency you reduced it to 80% so you'll only pay me monthly 8000 rupees okay from where is that money coming from your reserves as we all know not just india the entire globe is going through a financial crisis it can be uh, people have lost jobs people have lost uh, uh, you know having pay cuts etc big companies are being uh, you know shut down etc why they are not having enough reserves to run the business if you can uh, remember these two words uh, always when you go through financial statements general reserve transfer to reserve have you come across those words that that is what i'm talking about contingency i'm keeping a part of my existing profits aside to meet my future emergency or to meet my future uncertainty the eighth point is long term view as i told companies do not start with a exit date or do not start with an expiry date companies will go on forever no matter who is the ceo today i might be the ceo tomorrow somebody else but the company will go on as long as as long as the legally it has closed down or shut down okay so when i am making financial plan i need to look into the future when i am making plans for my future i also need to make financial arrangements labor arrangements technological arrangements other resources etc not just plan i also need to make the resources available for my upcoming financial years that is in the future so these are the eight principles of sound financial planning simplicity foresight flexibility liquidity economy optimum use contingency and long term view hope you have understood these points This is the last topic for this chapter guys. It is called as factors affecting sound financial planning. So you have to make some choice or decision. There is something that affects you, right? There's something that affects you psychologically, emotionally, etc. individually. I mean uh, I'm talking about uh individual lives. There's so many things that affect us in order to make certain choices in our lives, right? The same thing applies to a company's perspective. If company has to make certain financial plans or decisions or choices, there are number of factors that affect the company let's look into it the first one we are talking is nature of business what is our business dealing with am i dealing with manufacture of uh, you know raw materials into conversion into finished goods am i basically into manufacturing business or am i into retailing business or retail outlets as you step out of home you might find provisional stores you might find uh, so many retail shops around you all those are called as retailing business or retail business okay or am i into service industry etc so i need to first decide what is the nature of my business is it manufacturing service retail is it small scale in nature or is it medium scale or is it large scale okay i need to fit my company where does it fit in among these other 
यू नो ऑप्शंस विद मी स्मॉल स्केल लार्ज स्केल मीडियम स्केल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सर्विस इंडस्ट्री एक्सेट्रा सेकंड रिस्क टेकिंग कैपेसिटी नाउ इफ यू कैन सी दैट पिक्चर एट द बॉटम रिस्क गोज टू लो मीडियम एंड हाई दैट इज टू से दैट द रिस्क कैपेसिटी डिफर्स फ्रॉम इंडिविजुअल टू इंडिविजुअल or from company to company a startup company can't take up too much risk is that clear startup companies do not take debenture capital as well depends on the credit worthiness again reason being if i fail to make profits in the upcoming year the next financial year and i promised you 10% rate of return i have to pay you no matter what now if i don't have a backup of profits that is retained earnings or general reserve i will fail to make the payment Yes or no? So therefore, the risk-taking capacity will also differ from industry to industry or organization to organization. Organizations that have just started up, like two three years in the business, they can't take up much risk. But for people who are into fifty years into business or hundred years of completing a business enterprise or an industry, they are ready to take up even high risk. Only reason is they have a backup of what previous earned. profits or retained earnings is that clear number 3 position of the firm so i need to check where am i in my respective business industry for example if i am dealing with uh, uh, as i told manufacture of uh, mobile phones or smartphones right there's oppo vivo samsung oneplus there's so many other micromax so many uh, you know mobile phone manufacturers okay among that there's also rating given based on how many people buy the phone what are the features of the phone what is the amount of profits the manufacturing phone company is making etc so i need to check where is my position am i a just a uh, you know startup or an initiator into the industry or am i the leading company in the particular industry now i am talking about smartphone business right so here let's say oneplus is uh, uh, currently to my knowledge at least is one of the best phones or is one of the best having features etc so the position of one plus firm is on the top or on the leadership position and then comes on the other phone smartphone manufacturing companies so again depending upon the where do i stand in the industry uh, industry's perspective i also need to decide my financial plan Number four, study of financial markets. Now, this ten lakh rupees that I have, uh, uh, you know, taken from debenture as well as equity, I also need to study my financial markets. If you can look into that picture over there, you will see equity market, investment, derivatives, finance, secondary market, return, risk, etc. What you need to consider here is, if I am putting this ten lakh rupees into an investment avenue or into an investment resource. how much return am i getting which is risky and which is riskless now usually what we understand is all the government securities or bonds are less risky or i would say there's no risk at all compared to all the private securities like equity or uh, you know bonds given up by the private companies or private banks banks all those are what risky or i would say has more amount of risk so i need to understand and study and have an awareness of what is the financial market or where are the investment avenues available for the company again with two perspective before i to invest i need to look into two hours okay it's called maybe as for commonly called as r square also i need to look into the risk perspective i need to look into the return perspective how much return am i expecting for which how much risk am i ready to take up okay return and risk goes together if there is higher return there will be higher risk if there is low return there is going to be low risk point 5 economic conditions as i told i need to look into my business environment especially the economically where is the exchange rate standing today rupee value against the dollar value or i would say what is the taxation policy uh, currently prevailing in the government what is the budget saying about my in specific industry what are the taxation policies what are the regulations with respect to import of goods or export of goods etc okay so these are the economic conditions that i need to study number 6 is future 
plans. So I also need to check about not just my current financial year, but all the upcoming financial or my future plans, what all I need to be studying or what all I need to be taking care of technologically, labor, capital, all other kinds of resources I need to plan with the perspective of my not just current financial year, but also the upcoming financial years. The last one, seventh point is government plans and policy. As I told, with each party coming to power, each party is going to make their own uh, respective uh, choices or regulations or rules. Is that clear to you? Now, this government has made in a policy which is more applicable uh, uh, to the student body. That is a new education policy. Okay. So, likewise, each government is going to make their own respective changes. Okay. According to the changing markets, situations, people, the living standards, the purchasing power, exchange rate, etc. So, I need to be aware of what, wherever land you are situated your business in. Let's say it can be India, USA, Germany, France, whatever. That respective government, what is the government plans and policies with respect to your business or industry, you need to be aware of. Okay. So, these are the seven different factors which affect your sound financial plan. Nature of business, risk taking capacity, position of the firm, study of financial markets, economic conditions future plans and government plans and policies okay so here we have completed uh, our first unit with three uh, options today three topics today i would just want to take a quick review from the uh, first slide so we studied about finance and management separately what the two words mean we learned about the meaning of financial management. What is the aim or importance of finance? Five different points we studied. We different uh, studied uh, four very prominent decisions in financial management. As I told, this will be your upcoming next four chapters. Okay, investment, financing, dividend, and working capital. Next major section C question is goals of financial management, where you have two major goals: profit maximization favorable arguments and unfavorable arguments second is wealth maximization favorable arguments and unfavorable arguments next topic is financial manager who is a financial manager and what are the functions of financial management here again functions of financial management is a section c question where we have 10 different points and today's topic was Financial plan steps in financial planning can be a section B question. Principles of sound financial planning is your again section C question. And also the last one factors affecting their sound financial plan.